Hello, everyone. Welcome to week three of the I Am Online experience. It is Wednesday night. That means it's Identity Unplugged with a special guest. I'm going to introduce a special guest to you in just a moment. But in the meantime, I just want to repeat what I told you all last week, that uh, technology is of the devil. I seriously might I might seriously kill the internet with my bare hands tonight. And I know that's not very Christian, but we're going to do it anyway. So some of you are starting to pop on, which is so great. I love that. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Hi, Juanita. So glad you're here. I always love seeing you. You're always one of the first people to pop on, Juanita. I'm so glad. So yes, we had massive technology issues again. The good news. Hi, Vicki. The good news is I've come up with a completely dis different solution. So by Monday of next week, I'm going to have something completely different to use on video. Uh, this is, by the way, for those of us that do uh, Facebook video, uh, live uh, video, live video, this is one of our ongoing challenges because we need, in order to do interviews, we need to have a different type of technology medium in order to make that happen. Hey, Jen. Hey, Gwen. All right. We've already got 13 people popped on. I know you guys were waiting so patiently. All right. So first things first, let me introduce my guest because she's sitting here watching this crazy show. And I'm guessing she's probably wondering if she should have gotten something stronger to drink rather than just water. So I have my, okay. So I met uh, my friend who's with us today. Uh, gosh, it was probably uh, five years ago now. Is that about right? Probably, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think it was about five years ago. And uh, within, I don't know, about two and a half minutes, I was like, yeah, she is, she's like my soul sister. I knew it right away. And I don't feel that way about most people. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I, I know y'all who are watching understand this. I mean, uh, it's not always easy to like people. So I don't always feel that way about people, but I actually met Lisa and liked her right away. And here we are five years later and I still like her. So we have my friend here, Lisa Whittle, who is an author and a speaker. She's written far more books than I have. Uh, how many have you written now? Five? Six. This is six, mm -hmm. six books. The first one I read of hers was, um, I Want God, which was beautiful, beautiful book. She also wrote a book called Whole. And recently she just came out with a brand new book called Five Word Prayers. It's this tiny little book that is power packed. I love, love, love it. So if you're ever in one of those moments where you need a prayer and you can't come up with the words to say, Five Word Prayer, Five Word Prayers is a great go-to book. So anyway, before I gush anymore, welcome my friend, Lisa. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. And hi, everyone. Those of you who maybe I know or maybe we've never met before, but man, I'm honored to be here, Michelle. And just this is fun for me. We're just talking, right? We're just hanging out. So we were talking about our wardrobe choices for tonight. Right now, wow. I have um, a uh, like a previously worn tank on, which means it's been worn like probably one too many days and a um, sweatshirt. And I have my holy sweatpants and I have bare feet that look like they need to be washed really bad. So that's what you guys get. And Lisa's in her PJ is about ready to go to bed. So because she's it's Eastern not, time. It's almost nine o'clock here. So you said, yeah. you said that they will accept me as I am. So listen. Come as sure. is. Come <laughs> as is. And some of you who are watching, you. I mean, I was going to say, let us know what you're wearing, but that sounds creepy. So yeah. if you're in your PJs and yoga pants and comfortable, that's all good. So, uh, and I always let you guys know what I'm drinking tonight. It's um, really fancy water. It's same. It's same. It's water, but I did put a couple drops of peppermint peppermint oil in it to add some flavor. So, oh, yours is better than mine. Mine is just regular old water. Regular old water. So, anyway, welcome, Lisa. So glad you're here. And uh, I don't know if I told y'all who are watching, but this identity unplugged, the reason it's unplugged is because I don't let uh, my guests know what the questions are before they jump on. So we have a really honest conversation, uh, an honest conversation about our own identity struggles and how we've pressed through and how we're growing through that. What God is, the work God has done in us from 20, 30 years ago till now. And and how we're still learning and growing. And so that's what we've been doing and that's what Lisa and I are going to dig into. Uh, now, I know some of you have said that it's freezing. Uh, it sounds, it looks like the video is working okay from my end. Uh, I have a sidebar that shows me, but if the video freezes or if the audio stops altogether, please shoot me a comment and that way I can pay attention to it. And if we have to make adjustments, we will, but we're gonna press through 
tonight and see what we can do so we can get it um just keep going with the conversation all right so let's dive into our identity subject uh I, i'm just going to ask you a really honest question from the beginning on a scale from one to ten okay one to ten one being uh never like kind of almost never 10 being all the time how often do you struggle with self-doubt or any kind of sense of insecurity Ooh, okay oh it would have to be it would have to be at least i'm gonna say probably a six or a seven i'm gonna have to say you know i'm gonna say a good solid seven that's what i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm right a there with you sister. Seven. um <laughs> and it depends on the day it depends on the day that was i was gonna also mention that <laughs> depends on the day depends on what's happened but man it's an ongoing struggle and i would say it's a you know it's been a lifetime battle and you know i, I just i don't think you ever get to the place at least i have it and i don't really know anyone who has maybe they have some secret that i don't know of but um you know even if, as we get farther into maybe a career or a or a um you know even our age age is a beautiful thing i do think it helps us move along a little bit but i just think it's a struggle for all of us no matter what you you feel like at some point i should get past this or i should achieve some place that i don't struggle anymore it's just not true wouldn't that be nice? wouldn't that be I would be, nice? it would be great in theory it, it you know it, it all sounds great but you know, we're just humans and, mm -hmm. and we're human, we wear flesh and identity is just one of those evergreen things for all of us that I think we just deal with. Um, and society doesn't help with that, but I no, think our own, our own humanness, it just, we bear the weight of that every single day because we're not in our best life yet. Our best life is the heaven life. And I know you and I have talked about that a hundred times, not on a Facebook camera. Um, you yes, know, we we have, you know, our, our our best life is the one that we're yet to have. And so while we're here in heaven, we 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 uh, just need the help of the Lord to, to deal with things like identity. So, uh, OK, so here's another hard question. You know, I dive right into the deep in the pool, but you and I kind I'm of with you. Look, we do right that. Here, we just right dive here. right yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a lot of time for. <laughs> You know, I, right. I, don't, I don't mind nice, easy, fun, fluffy questions, but I mean, I just like to dive into the real stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to take it one step further since we already went into the deep end of the pool. Okay. Um, what are the top one, two, three things that cause you or trigger you to doubt yourself? So I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Because I, I can't ask you that if I'm not willing to do it, to do it myself. Okay. Uh, I, um, I'd say, uh, let's just, this is really honest. Uh, biology. I have just different swings of moods that happen b depending on weather, depending on, can I say this in mixed company, time of the month, you know, whatever, right. where it's just physical. I just have a physical, like, like overwhelming wave of you're the biggest loser kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And I just have to acknowledge this. there's really no reason for it. I just feel that way. So yeah. that would be one. The second would be, uh, Whenever I see, and this is a hard one for me to admit, when I see other people's achievements, I think I'm so driven to accomplish or to get a job done or so task focused that um, achievements, uh, even though I'm very happy for other people, especially now that my capacity is less, I feel like I'm underperforming. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm not happy. It's not that I'm jealous. It's more of a, I feel like I'm not pulling my weight. And that yep. makes me doubt myself. Okay, so those are mine. Now your turn. Well, you took my top two. <laughs> and 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 really it's, that it's actually fun. makes me feel better. So I'm not quite so much <laughs> in that house alone. <laughs> no, you're you know, you you and I are we're wired similarly similarly, but um I would say those two are absolute two for me. I would say another thing that triggers some identity issues for me are when i behave poorly like when i when i do something that honestly is not very holy spirit controlled um it, you mean it, that happens to other people besides me yeah i mean oh gracious you know when i when i do something in such a way that i've either run ahead of god or i have you know just really made a blunder you know mm -hmm. that triggers a lot of um self-esteem things where i think you know look you thought you'd come far but then you and i know and i know a lot of that is you know very you know obviously satan 
um, whispering things in my ear, wanting me to believe, you know, all of that. But it, it, it really is, that is a trigger for me. So I would say biology is huge for me. I think for all women, that's something we've just got to own and face and, you know, deal with. And then, and then, um, you know, certainly other people's seeing other people's successes, which I, I have, that's something that I have to work on a lot with the, the Lord has to work on with me a lot is, you know, what is that really? What is, what is it that, um, makes me feel less than in that moment. And then, you know, third, you know, just understanding that those blunders are, um, you know, not only do they not mark me in the sense of me, that doesn't mean that I haven't made progress in my life. That doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit hasn't controlled me and shaved areas of my personality that need to be shaved. It just means it might just be a human blunder, you know, a human moment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, those things I, I think for me are, are probably the one, two, threes, honestly. Yeah. I just so. thought of another one for me as well. And that's when there's conflict with anybody, which sounds, I don't know if that yeah. sounds crazy to y'all or not, but you know, cause conflict is a nor tension in relationship is a normal part of human interaction. Yeah. And yet when there's any tension in a relationship, uh, I immediately jump to somehow I must be responsible for that. Somehow yeah. it's my fault. Somehow I must have done something wrong. So rather than rather than having my default response be, uh, there's tension in this relationship because we're two different humans that have two different perceptions and you know whatever. Rather than having that kind of benefit of the doubt, grace approach, my assumption when there's any kind of conflict is, you blew it, Michelle. You must have done something wrong. Conflict wouldn't happen. Tension wouldn't happen if you would have done everything right. And that's actually a false, that's a false assumption. That's not even a truth. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, I, I think that's something that a lot of us feel the weight of. And, um, you know, it's a, it's kind of a go-to, you know, where we, we begin to just really blame ourselves and, and take the weight of things that, you know, sometimes aren't ours to own. We can't um, possibly know what someone else's, uh, situation is that might make them be re reacting or responding in mm -hmm. such a way. Um, so it, it really does become, uh, we have to take responsibility for our own selves, not worry so much about what, it, what, how someone else reacts to us, but it's, I don't know, the whole thing is difficult. That's why we're talking about it, right? Yes. I mean, this is why we're talking about this. <laughs> Otherwise you'd have no half an hour, um, Facebook deal, right? Exactly. That is so true. I'm reading yeah. some of the, the comments of people that are responding to us. Uh, and, uh, Linda is saying, yes, I, I'm always bouncing things off of others to see if my feelings are valid, Christine said, I'm with you, Michelle, Reda uh, Juanita and Rachel and Radana were all talking about how conflict impacts them. And so many were saying, saying the same thing to you, Lisa, that they're right there with you. So this is, I mean, I guess the good news is all of this is that we're definitely not alone. This is part of the human condition, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just part of our flesh. Uh, one of the things that we talked about this week, uh, the theme for this week is covenant. So on Monday, I did a whole teaching on covenant in the Old Testament, specifically God's cutting covenant with Abraham. And the whole point of that teaching was the fact that covenant in ancient times was supposed to be a mutual binding pledge. But in the case of God's covenant with us, uh, it was a binding pledge, but God assumed all the consequences if that, that covenant was broken, meaning that the covenant relationship, the covenant love that we have with him, that he extends to us is unconditional, right? It's unconditional. And, uh, and honestly, and that's one of the things that we talked about on Monday is that covenant love then becomes a, basically an anchor or a grounder to all of these things that cause us to doubt ourselves, that cause us to ride the roller coaster of our own emotions and feelings. And, you know, you wrote that book, I, I Want God, which was all about out of everything that you want to hang on to, you want to hang on to God with both hands, both hands. And I would imagine that journey for you has been part of you getting anchored in who you are and not riding this roller coaster of trying to chase after significance and security anymore. It really was, Michelle. I mean, honestly, that that moment in time, right? So that was like 2014 when I wrote that and in 2015, kind of when it released. But 
that the, the reason why that was so significant in my life was because I found myself, even after I'd been writing for a while, even after I'd been speaking for a while, even though I had been, you know, raised in the church, my father was a pastor. I found myself at a place where um, I, I was so tired of myself struggling with the same things over and over again. I, I and, and what I found was that I was being consumed by what other people thought of me and, um, you know, how I was doing on the scale of, of success. Right. So, you know, what that looked like and it was consuming even, me. It was even success in being a good Christian girl. I hope you all hear, heard this who are listening that Lisa grew up as a pastor's daughter. Okay. So she has, she's been eating, drinking, breathing the Bible her whole life. And yet this is an ongoing struggle for, so, so for those of you who are brand new to faith, and you're frustrated that you don't have it figured out yet. Oh, <laughs> friends, you're in such good company because this is, like you said, an ongoing challenge. Yeah, I mean, no, it's really true. And, and you know, even why I wrote Five Word Prayers, Michelle, is because, you know, I, my goodness, I've heard zillions of prayer, you know, sermons on prayers. I've read a lot of prayer books. It's something that I've had as a part of my DNA my whole life. And yet, you know, as a grown woman, I, I, I see the value of prayer more and more. And yet I'm still frustrated sometimes in my prayer life. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I should be farther along, you know? And so I wrote this book because I thought I want to help people. I want to help me. I want to help us because sometimes life leaves us speechless and we don't have all the words. We don't have all the perfect words. And sometimes we think we have to have that. And so things that we don't feel successful at as humans, we tend to shy away from. And so you know, that the little devotional book you were talking about is meant to be a mm -hmm. spark to help people. But, you know, yeah, the, the journey of, of I want God was saying, I, I have to have God consume me more than my life currently is. And that is more than my desire to be popular or known or, mm -hmm. you know, for people to to think I'm awesome or whatever the case may be. I mean, I have to um, have God consume me more than that because otherwise i am drowning in this pool of approval and oh, it is a oh, you know oh. it's, it's a never ending it's a never oh, ending God. chase michelle it's a never ending chase um and c.s lewis had a great quote c.s lewis had a great quote that simply said i need christ not something that resembles him mm. i need christ not something that resembles him and boy we settle for basically uh, shallow reflections of Christ all the time. And, and basically what that means is just going to church is not enough. Yeah. Just, you know, and not even just doing Christ-like things. It's, it has to be him. He has to be the anchor. He is the only one that will hold. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, I, I just, you know, I remember one time we were, I was, I was upset about something and I, I remember, I, I don't, I don't know what it was, but I think it was like, if the, to the best of my recollection, it was like a, a bad book review online. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which seems like ridiculous, but you know, it's amazing how some person's words, even over the internet, I think we can all relate to this. Oh, whether yes. It doesn't matter whether a writer or not, or whether it's a bad book review, it's just someone's words, you know, five words or six words or 10 words that someone writes something can, um, you know, really, kind of wreck us for a whole day. Um, and so I just remember it was something online that I read. It was about a book or something that I written and I just was very consumed by it. And I remember I, I went to the Lord and I just was like, God, this is, this is just unfair. And I don't like this and this feels gross. And I want to fight for, you know, my rights in this. And I was just taking this to the Lord. And I remember Michelle very vividly, the Lord just kind of spoke to my heart. You know, this wasn't audible. This was just a sense of the spirit. And, and it, he literally spoke to my heart and it was like, Lisa, don't fight for people to love you. Mm. Fight for people to love me. And when, when it okay, was, repeat that again. And somebody needs to post that on Facebook because that's good. It was, it was really this. It was, you know, don't fight for people to love you fight for people to love me. And when when he said that, it was this understanding of if you spend your life in an endless chase of wanting people to love you, then welcome to a life of endless toil. Uh, welcome to a yeah. life of exhaustion. Welcome to a life that will never ever work, you mm -hmm. know? But if you fight for the things of the Lord, for God things, 
that is a life giving fight. That's a life because that's what the creator created us to do. As you know, Michelle is to, is to have this life purpose of, you know, living for our creator. And so if we want to be, you know, exhausted and be on this endless chase that never results in anything mm -hmm. but us being disappointed and exhausted and let down, then let's fight for ourselves. But if we want to be on this beautiful journey of our life purpose that the creator himself gave to us, then we can fight for God things. And that is when I chose to have that better, that better decision. And someone, I noticed someone commented and said that they missed the name of the book. The book, the name of the book was called, I want God. Um, it's still available, but it was a book that I wrote several years ago, but that was, that was kind of where I was at that point and still am by the way, all the oh, time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And that's why some of those, uh, those phrases or those quotes that God gives us, I end up writing down on an index card and leave them close by uh, because I need to be reminded of that truth day after day after day. Just this last week, I got my my first one star review. Everyone, it's my very first one star review. Oh, sure. <laughs> just saying, but this uh. one. I know it's like that was my baby. You just gave a one star review to my baby. What's wrong with you? And the interesting thing is, they were criticizing me for being too religious. Which I'm like, well, if you're going to criticize me for something, that's you go right exactly. ahead. <laughs> if you want to accuse me of being too religious and too much about God, then bring uh, it on. I love that. But did they read the title? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm like, I, you know, I pretty much don't make it a secret about what I believe, but. Uh, but, you know, those things, if it really is, if we are chasing after everyone else's approval, it will knock our feet out from under us. Yeah. But if we're chasing after God's affection, which we already have, all right, if we are just chasing after him with everything in us, the thing is we we never lose him. So there's no risk. I mean, chasing right. after God is nothing but a win. That's right. Chasing after people is always a risk. It's always a risk. And more times than not, we are going to lose. It's a risk with a huge price tag and, oh, you know, it's a risk that like we've talked about, you know, it's just a, it's a life of the hamster wheel. It's a life of striving and trying and exhaustion. And, you know, I, I think one day I realized, and I'm, you know, sometimes it takes me a while, but I realized I was like, oh, you mean I can like try my whole life to get people to like me. And at some, like, someone's still not going to like me, you know? <laughs> it's still going to happen. It dawned on me, you know, and it's like, just, it's just going to happen that way because I can't control how somebody else feels about me. No matter how hard I try, no matter what I do, I'll be trying too hard or I'll remind someone of their, you know, ex-in-law they don't like. And that has nothing to do with me. You know, at the end of the day, it's just not worth it. And so it doesn't mean we shouldn't be gracious and kind and loving it. We, of course, those things, but it means that that chase of approval, that chase of love, you know, that's just not how we spend our life. Yeah, it's just, it's just I not. totally agree. Yeah. And when we stop chasing after that, that's the interesting part. Uh, the peace and security that lands it's, and it doesn't stay there forever. I mean, I will be totally secure today and wake up completely <laughs> secure tomorrow sure. yeah. and have to do the battle all over again. So yeah. let's get really practical for everybody. So I want to hear from you. So when you have those days where the insecurity is just hitting you right between the eyes and you're just feeling it for whatever reason, you know, yeah. sometimes there's a cause and effect and sometimes it just happens, right? Like a, like a weather storm that flies in and you have no idea where it came from. Yeah. When that does, what is your practical process to get you back to a place of being grounded? Hmm. Well, I, you know, I would say that most of the time I find that if I am in that place where I'm in some kind of a frenzy or some kind of a, you know, insecure place, or it's a, you know, it's because I have been one, starving my relationship with God somehow, because it's very hard to be, you know, tethered tight to be, you know, really in there with God when I'm and, and, and be feeling, you know, very insecure at the same time. I mean, that's yeah. just, it's just hard to be, those things are at odds. Right. Are you so, surprised at how quickly you unravel? Like if I even go a couple days without yes. some really sweet quiet time, I become a crazy woman. I mean, let's just be honest yeah. here. Um, Jesus has to keep me on a very short leash. Oh, listen, I often say like, 
I might not be his hardest case, but I'm definitely in the top five. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely uh, need the short leash as well. Oh, <laughs> man. So I, many I things mean, I like, and I actually pray for that. I'm like, Jesus, keep me close because you yeah. and I both know. You and if I, I both too know. Far. <laughs> 48 hours and I am off the rails. Oh, off the rails. Oh, oh, I promise. I'm Michelle, I'm so there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, prayer, prayer to me is, is a huge, huge, huge thing. And it, it, here's what I think we believe. Like, I, I think we hear that. I think we, we, we get that, but I think sometimes it goes one ear and out the other because it's so familiar. Right. I think also, and, and it's hard. Prayer is really hard. It's hard. And I also think sometimes we think our mindset is, well, yes, let me pray because I know that's what God expects of me. Or let me read my Bible because I know that's a spiritual discipline I should do. Well, it's it's definitely, yes. I mean, obviously we should obey God. And he told us that we need to spend time with him. But he did that because he knew that that's what we need. I mean, that's the genius of God. It's not because he's on some ego trip and he just needs us to it's spend not time with him. He's needy. It's exactly. like we are. <laughs> it's like he knew that in our frail humanness, that the thing that would ground us and bring us back to our true north and help us with those feelings of insecurity would be to be in his presence. Because honestly, it's the only thing that works. You know, I have friends who have buried their children and they've told me, you know, Lisa, the only thing that kept me breathing was to spend any with to spend time with the Lord like it's the only time I felt like that I could go on and so you know to have identity issues and whatever whatever the issue I mean that's our grounding place yeah. Michelle so I mean I could give us really neat fun steps we might not have thought of before but I don't know anything better than to go to the Lord that's that's my that's my compass that's my guide and that's not just a like spiritual answer for your crowd you know that's the way I feel so I mean but but here's what I'll say if if I start to you know feel like I am slipping into this you know comparison mode or identity weirdness or whatever um one thing I do is try to detach, which you so wisely do, Michelle, and I respect hugely. I detach from social media yeah. immediately, if possible. Um, it's 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 hard to do when when we are spending our life on social media, especially mm -hmm. when we're you know promoting books or whatever we're doing, and we could all give a million excuses for it. Trust me, we could all, <laughs> yeah. we could all say, "Well, this is why I have to do it," right? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, you just you come to a place where you say, I'm going to do what makes my soul well. That's what I'm going to do and whatever that takes. And so yeah. detaching from social media, I think is huge. Um, you know, spending time with the Lord is huge. You know, sometimes I don't have very many words to pray, but even if I pray, you know, five simple words sometimes, yeah. and I, I believe the Lord can take it from there. Um, I think one thing that's really important, Michelle, in a very practical way is having a practice of telling myself the truth, not letting uh, truth yeah. get away from me. Yes. Um, and so the minute that I begin to sense that something's going to skew with me and I, we, we know it in our spirit. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're all pretty in tune with kind of where we are. Um, I, I, I try to acknowledge that and go, something's not good here. And also to have people in your life that can, can help you with that, you know, mm -hmm. is very important because, Telling the truth to ourselves is a huge part of not letting identity issues go crazy. And um, our, our messages yeah. to ourselves are horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we really, uh, we do a great job of having on repeat untruths all the time. And then we wonder why we feel terrible. Uh, and just today, I read another chapter in uh, Henry Cloud's book, Changes That Heal. And he said that we've got to take control of what we're saying to ourselves. And that's what's so powerful about your book, um, The Five Word Prayers, as well as I Am, is because it has uh, basically scripts, which, you know, I know some people are so resistant to scripts, but memorizing scripture, or at least pulling out a book that has clear scripture and reading it out loud as many times as you have to until you start to grab hold of that truth. That's so critical. I mean, literally, there are some days that uh, are so rough that I will just take a, a snippet of scripture and remind myself, yeah. uh, like Jesus' words when he said, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. 
Yeah. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Jesus, you said you will not leave me as orphans. You will come to me. I'm feeling like an orphan. So, but the Bible says you said I will not leave you. And I'll just keep saying it again and again yep. till I don't have that orphan heart anymore. I'm not quite feeling quite so orphaned anymore. Yeah, that's so good. I, you know, Michelle, I do, t I do that too. And that's a practice that is so powerful. And as you were saying, five word prayers, and I know I am is the same way, you know, it's based on scripture. Cause to me, why come up with other ideas? I mean, everything we need to know <laughs> exactly. is in the word of God, you know, everything we need to know, everything powerful is in the word. And there's nothing more powerful than speaking scripture over our life. There's nothing, there's no words that I could possibly say that would be more genius than than the word of God. I mean, everything in there. And so it is, it's the, the, the power of saying something like, um, thank you for finding me, which is, you know, one of the five word prayers, which is based on Deuteronomy 34, which says, though you're at the ends of the earth, your God will go and find you and bring you back to him again. Oh, yeah. You know, there's something sweet that. about that, you know, it is, it's so sweet. Yeah. The fact that, you know, the Lord, you know, we always think about our pursuit of God, but what about his pursuit of us? What about him going and finding us and bringing us back to him again? That is a that is quite a purposeful pursuit. Yes. And so to me, you know, to, to even acknowledge it and to say, thank you for finding me. It's, it's as you say, you will not leave us as orphans. I mean, those are things that we could recite to ourselves all day over and over again, mm -hmm. that I doubt if we were to say that over and over again to ourselves all day, that we would end the day feeling the same way we woke up if we yeah. felt um, you know, if we had an identity crisis, it's hard to have an identity crisis when you're saying to yourself all day, thank you for finding me, God, you know? Totally. Because, okay. So I'm sitting here thinking yeah. you're kind of stepping on my toes or maybe you're not. It's probably God step, using your words to step on my toes. But how many times do I rehearse and rehash uh, comments that other people have made or failures I have done? I basically obsess over yeah. negative statements so, I've received or that I even feel about myself, I will memorize those and rehearse them and rehash them until I'm miserable. Yeah. But when it comes to repeating scripture, I'll do it one time and I get frustrated if I don't feel better. So what would happen if you and I grew just as obsessive about repeating the truth of scripture and what God says about us and who we are? over and over and over again, rather than rehashing all the wrongs done to us, rehashing all the right that God has done for us. Well, you know, I'm going to try that now that you've, now that you've, you, you, you've, now that you've like challenged me in that. Um, well, you that, started it. You totally started it. <laughs> that's the iron sharpening iron, right? But yes, no, ma'am. Um, that's an actual great, that's a great thought though. I mean, it, so, you know, I talk a lot about, and I've, I've, the Lord has really convicted me about, about the mind and about how the, the mind is where so many things um, start, right? I mean, the mind mm -hmm. is a major place of attack. Um, that's why the, the Lord says in Proverbs, above everything, and literally wow. the word everything, Michelle, above everything, guard your mind because life flows from it. So, oh, yeah. you know, about, oh, about you everything. You just had to throw out that verse. Dang. Well, I mean, Why did I invite you on this interview? <laughs> well, the mind <laughs> is a major place of attack for me. I'm with you. I obsess over things. I could tell you almost, I probably could tell you every negative thing that's ever been said to me my whole entire life. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't matter all the positive things. Those are kind of lesser to me. But the negative things, I can remember all the hurtful things. Um, but I will say this, um, I think I realized anew this year, the Lord began to really impress upon me the power of the mind and that, you know, though we don't have control over the things that pop into it in many cases, although we do let a lot into our minds, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother Facebook live, but, um, <laughs> yes. but what it, but we do have the power to shut things out. And I do think that, uh, and taking captive, I mean, obviously yes. we know that from scripture, totally. but I think that would be powerful with your challenge, um, duly taken, that we would, um, you know, at, at every negative thought that we would then combat it with a scriptural truth. And as that negative thing came into our head, we say, but, he bottles my tears or what time I have I'm afraid I'll trust in you or whatever verse that we know, which is, which by the way, reminds us of the importance of memorizing and knowing scripture. Totally. So uh, it's right at the ready when we yeah, need it. And it's never too late. So if someone says, well, 
you know, I don't really know a lot of scripture. It's okay. Maybe tomorrow you start, like mm -hmm. really pick a verse, maybe a really short verse. I would recommend starting with a short verse and just chew on it, meditate on it, talk, say that verse over and over again. So listen, I've been in Ephesians one, reading that chapter over and over again for about two months because the Lord has just had me there. And I've probably read Diane. that chapter. Diane is watching right now and she says she's going through a really hard time and so she's reading Psalm 143 every day. Perfect. She's going back over and I'm like, exactly. that's exactly what you do. That's what you, you do. Read it every day yes. and some days you're not going to be feeling it, but darn it, you get out there and read it again. And at some point, uh, because God promises that his word never comes back empty, that when that's he sends right. it out, it accomplishes what he sends it out to accomplish. Yeah. So eventually, this is a promise, right? So eventually, the word that God has sent out into your mind, into your heart, will accomplish the freedom that he set it out to accomplish. So you just stay the course and keep reading Psalm 143 and whatever verse that you have, and it does it. I've seen it happen. The problem is, at least with me, is um. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of work. I want, I want, I want microwave results, right? I want to just yeah. snap my fingers and have it. But what I'm starting to understand is the struggle. Uh, the fruit comes from the struggle. Mm, that's so true. Gosh, I mean, it's so true. I love, you know, the repetitive nature of, you know, scripture and spiritual disciplines. You know, my mentor used to say to me all the time, Lisa, stay in the journey. And I was like, okay, well, what, Monty, what I, yeah, Monty, <laughs> I appreciate that catchphrase. Yes, but... but I'm in the journey. I'm like, what, I mean, how many choices do I have? You know, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. the reality is, is that was meant to be like really a spiritual prompt to not only just be here and be breathing and just be going through the motions, but be engaged in this, you know, be engaged in this spiritual thing that the Lord has called us to. We are meant to do more than just exist. We're meant to do more than just settle for some kind of cheap substitute for a vibrant relationship with God. And, you know, when he says, listen, you are daughters of the King. When it says in Ephesians one, listen, you belong to Christ because of my great love. I've adopted you. You know, we, we don't need to skim over that. Like that should mean everything that changes everything. That means that we have a dad who's unlike all earthly dads and that his covering and his power is available to us. And so we should walk through the world different. So, you know, it, 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 that's just the way that we can roll from here. And um, we're not immune from life's problems, but we do have a different sense uh, as we walk through the world, knowing that we belong to Christ. And so um, that's a different identity that we need to really grasp onto. I love it. I love it. I learn so much from you, Lisa. Every time we're together, I learn so much from you. I Same. totally do. Goodness. All right. Any final words for our listeners before we take off? Well, I, I did do this all night, but I did promise you. I did promise you thirty minutes. So, oh, well, listen, it's been my joy. It's been it's my bedtime, so this is perfect timing. Um, You're no, welcome. Yes, thank you. I'm so I'm a granny at this point. Um, listen, no, it's been my it's been my joy, and I I love getting to know you people that are on here and wherever you are in your walks of life. The the beautiful thing, Michelle, and you know this is we're we we think we're all so different. We're all so very much alike. We all struggle with so many of the same things. Identity is, is something we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. And we all have this beautiful personal God who though, you know, he is uh, this great big God of the universe. He's so very personal for each one of us. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, you know, encourage everybody watching and listening to really grasp on to what you have. Um, I would I would encourage you to read Ephesians one and really yes. remember that the power, uh, the same power that uh, raised Jesus from the dead and seated him oh, at the right hand of the Father yes. is available to us. You know, that's this. amazing. It is. I, I just it keep is. going back to you know, let's stop obsessing on the negative and start obsessing on the glory of God. And when we yeah. become OCD about God, man, life is going to be different. It's true. So right. I love you guys already. And Michelle, I love you. You already know that. And this is amazing. Look at us. We're holding yeah. up each other's books. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So you all, I'm going to get on Facebook in a little bit. I will make sure I post Lisa's website that, so you can find where she is. I will post a link to her most recent book as well as I Want God because I love that one as well. 
Uh, and I'll make sure that you guys have all the connections so that way you can stay in touch with Lisa. And if she has time, I've invited her to pop over to the Facebook group and yeah, to, to interact with you all as you're able. Um, but thank you so much again for being with us, darling. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. And to the rest of you, you guys know I love you. I'm having so much fun doing this six week study together and there are still three more weeks to come. So you guys, this is a point, just side note before we close off. We're midpoint on the journey and this is where people drop off. This is where people get weary of the struggle or they start to fade or it just becomes like a complacent experience. So I'm going to encourage you all for the second leg, second half of this six week journey together to not fade off, but to finish well. This isn't about me. This is about you guys experiencing transformation that God wants for you, all right? This is what he wants for you, to, for you to live and the new freedom. So we're gonna finish well over these next three weeks. And Lisa, you were just a perfect addition right here, smack dab in the middle. Thank you, my friend. All right, I love you guys, and I will see the rest of you on Facebook. Have a great evening.